Mrs. Wong, Madam Ko, colleagues and fellow Mabelites, we are gathered in the hall today to mark a very memorable occasion in our young country's history. And I hope that due to the solemnity of this occasion that you can be serious. Thank you. Singapore fell to the Japanese at 6.20 p.m. on 15 February 1942. That is why we commemorate Total Defence Day every year near the state. Our year's theme is the strength of our nation. As such, we want to remember the pain that our forefathers suffered so that we are convicted in ensuring that it never happens to us again. However, we also want to remember their resilience, their resourcefulness, and look back at how we have come as a nation. Let us now invite Master Sergeant Isan from NCC Hope for One to read the NCDM message. Thus, good morning, Mr. Sulaiman, Mrs. Fong, Madam Po, teachers, and fellow Nicolites. I am Master Sergeant Isan from NCC, and I'm here to share with you the Singapore Civil Defence Force message. On 15 February 1942, Singapore fell to the Japanese after the British surrendered their forces during the World War II. In memory of this fateful day, we have come to commemorate the 15th of February each year as Total Defence Day to remind Singaporeans on the importance of defending our nation's independence. Total Defence is made up of five pillars that bring everyone together to overcome challenges and threats that come our way. These five pillars are military defence, civil defence, economic defence, social defence and psychological defence. This Sunday is Total Defence Day and you will hear the Paul City Plus being sounded from the public warning system for the first time at 6.20pm instead of 12.05pm as has been the case in previous years. 6.20pm marks the time in which the British forces in Singapore had surrendered to the Japanese Imperial Army on 15 February 1942. The positive blast, known as the important message signal, is sorted by the SCBM through an island-wide network of public warning system in observance of total events A. The signal, one of three public warning system signals, is sounded to alert members of the public to imminent threats that may endanger their lives and property. The other two signals are the alarm and the all clear signals. To hear these signals, learn more about them. Visit the SCPF website. The SCPF would like to encourage all of you to be proactive in learning emergency preparedness so that you will be able to protect and save yourself, your loved ones, and others during emergencies. The simple act of calling 995 for help when you spot someone who has collapsed can make a great difference in a life and death situation. Having a community of first responders who is able to respond to emergencies and provide immediate assistance before SCDF's arrival will bring about a better outcome for those in distress. You can do your part by learning life-saving skills and coming forward to it, and, and coming forward as a community first responder to help others. You can then transform Singapore into a nation of life savers, which we can all be proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Isan. Neighbor Lights, when you hear the important message signal through the island-wide network of public warning system sirens this Sunday at 6.20 p.m., you can immediately tune in to any of the local radio stations to listen to an important message broadcast and also to learn more about the other public warning system sirens. In an actual emergency, when the siren sounds, you should similarly tune in to any local radio station for important announcements as well as instructions. This can make and will make a life and death difference for you and your loved ones. The period of the Japanese occupation marked the darkest three years and eight months of our nation's history. Let us now look briefly at how the impregnable fortress of Singapore caused
colonized by the mighty British, fell to the Japanese within one week. So, the 
didn't, they didn't uh, challenge or scold her or try to get back into play. They just said, okay. Hanga brought up the worst and best in people. Many were driven to extreme measures to fill an empty stomach. For those who share the trauma of hunger and managed to get by, their experience inspired acts of kindness that renewed people's faith in goodness and humanity. Unfortunately for people like Perahusha and ordinary folk who succumbed to a slow death by starvation, their suffering was as bad, if not worse, than the thousands of violent deaths that occurred during this dark period of Singapore's history. So, what was it really like to live on little or no food? Two of our own neighbourites, under the supervision of Miss Rashida, underwent a three-day tapioca diet. Let's welcome Zixian and Shahirin from Hope 52 to share with us their thoughts and experiences. From the 
the nutritional information of tapioca, we learn that although it provides rich source of carbohydrates to provide us with energy and makes us feel full, it lacks of protein, vitamins B1, C and D. Because the food that people ate during wartime in Singapore were mostly foods high in carbohydrates and without vitamins, people suffered from malnutrition and chosen in particular suffered from very very scurvy and rickets. Protein and vitamin B1 rich foods include meat, poultry, fish, seafood and milk. Vitamin C can be obtained from citrus fruits, broccoli, tomatoes, while vitamin D can be obtained from fatty fish such as salmon, tuna and mackerel. Sadly, some of these foods were not available or in limited supply during the wartime. Through this experience, I now appreciate the abundance of food in Singapore and think twice before wasting food. We will be having a move at all recesses to showcase the wartime foods, nutritional information and deficiency diseases. We will also be serving delicious tapioca for tasting. Do come and support us. I will definitely be there. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sisian and Shahirin. Let us hope that we will never have to go through what our fathers did. Each year, we commemorate this day as a stark reminder that we never want to go through this again. That the defence of our country cannot be left in the hands of others. No one else is responsible for our security and well-being. Just as our forefathers had turned their trials into strengths, we too must understand that we must find our own way to survive and prosper. Because 2015 also marks 50 years of our nation's independence, let us also pay tribute to the resilience and resourcefulness of our forefathers. What did they do to have to survive? We'll now have a team of neighbor lights from Hope Suwan, who had their own Grow Our Own Food campaign in our very own neighbor light green to share with us what they did. Sweet potato leaves. 
First, we cut the stems near the root and set them aside. Next, we brought them to the shade to separate out the leaves and the stems. This is because the stems take far longer to grow than the leaves. So we separate them out to ensure that we can cook the stems first and the leaves later. Finally, we pack them in a large plastic bag. We also learned that the stems will need to have its outer layer peeled before it could be cooked. I never knew preparing sweet potato leaves was so troublesome. I will now tell you about my reflection. I learned not to take food for granted. During the war, people worked really hard to plant food. Today, we do not need to plant our own food for survival, and yet, I always see people wasting food. This experience has taught me that we should not waste food or take the food we have every day for granted. I also learned a lot about patience. It has been a month since we planted our tapioca, and yet there are no leaves visible yet. I can only imagine how miserable it was seven months for that tapioca to grow. I will also share with you Shamaya's reflections. Through this planting and harvesting exercise, I have newfound respect for those who went through the war because it was such a difficult time. I only planted tapioca once and harvested sweet potato leaf once. I did not rely on it for food. I am very impressed by the resilience of the people who went through the war because they went through all this hardship just to get some tapioca. I learned to treasure the food we eat because now I see the effort that goes into growing a single tapioca or a single stalk of sweet potato leaf. I will try not to waste food from now on and learn to appreciate everything my parents give me instead of complaining all the time. I found the planting process easy enough, but I felt the entire process was quite difficult because of the time it took for the tapioca to grow. I checked out my tapioca every day and over the weekend, I worried that it may not have been enough, getting enough water if it did not rain. I feel kind of disappointed that I haven't seen a leaf sprout from a tapioca. And Vinyas has written his reflection in a story form. You can read about it during recess today at the FCD booth. We have come to the end of our sharing. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Aura, Nasha, and Tasha. We will now look at Singapore over the years through her trials and trials. and the unity of these two characters.
transport, the number of commuters taking trains and buses will grow, and the need to protect these commuters from any security threat continues. And that is one of the reasons why the Public Transport Security Command was formed. Men themselves will control, will control the MRT stations, the LRT interchanges as well as the bus interchanges to deter uh, as well as to provide reassurance to the public. Happen. 
happening to us. We have come to the end of the program, but before that, I would like to thank a group of people who have put in a lot of effort to make today's program possible.